entrepreneurship in waste management. So we have, uh, I'm actually director of Cyclone Projects. We have office in Delhi, but we have done a lot of work all over the country. In fact, we have worked in, uh, uh, even in Nagaland and uh, Shillong and Northeast, we done a lot of work for net fee, not, for waste, not in the waste management sector, but something totally different on sustainable floriculture, for example, commercial floriculture. This, this is for NetFee, which is a premier uh, you know, organization. And we have been working in Assam also for, uh, I'm just giving this background because uh, your organization um, is based out of Assam. And, uh, but we have worked all over the country and in different areas. Focus ha has been mainly waste management. Next, please. Next slide, please. So I'll just give a quick, you know, um, um, introduction to the company where I work for. It's basically a consortium of progressive technical and management professionals with a lot of, uh, you know, we have a lot of manpower from the environmental and social uh, background and also, uh, you know, communications and other sectors. So it's a very, uh, it's a, except for me, everybody is quite young actually in, the, in this organization. And we keep trying out new things, you know, how to build entrepreneurship, how to help the rack pickers, you know, working uh, right at the at the bottom of the pyramid, you know, in terms of working with the informal sector and also the high-end consultancy, like designing of landfill sites, you know, working on detailed project reports. We are also part of the Swach Bharat Mission uh, approved list of consultants. Uh, and uh, recently, I will also be discussing the Swach Bharat Mission 1 and the Swach Bharat Mission 2.0 which has been launched recently. And what are the new opportunities which could emanate from them for, uh, for uh, let's say, a young entrepreneur in Assam or in the Northeast, you know, who probably is willing to go the whole hog and, you know, try to do something new. And in an area where, which is a, still a virgin area, I would say, because it still, though there have been rules, regulations, the compliance has been an issue. Um, we came into existence in 1987 and uh, it was incorporated as a company in 1996. So technically, the company is 25 years old. We just celebrated our civil jubilee. Though I have been working in this sector, you know, the broadly in, uh, I mean, as a consultant uh, for last 35 years almost. We are in panel with a host of multilateral bilateral agencies. We are the panel of the World Bank, GIZ, Zika. Zika is the Japanese uh, bilateral agency. Different, uh, Denida, NORAD, um, and many others actually, ADB. And we work on several projects. So whatever I'm presenting today is basically, it's not a very long presentation, but I'm just trying to get a gist, give you a gist of the opportunities which exist for today's youth, for today's, let's say, even the you know young ladies who pass out of college or those who are technically qualified or some progressive people, you know, um, getting together to form an NGO. Incidentally, we also run an NGO called Navanubhuti, where we basically focus on the informal sector, working with the rag pickers, helping the women, you know, the, uh, the, the, the women in the rag picker community, even looked at the gender issues and things like that, you know, because these are all related areas. The waste management is one, uh, one area, but you see 90 to 95% of the waste collection in India is done by the informal sector. So the informal sector becomes very important for in this chain. And then of course you come, you know, you have this, uh, the technology, the manpower, the resources, the design part, etc. But so uh, for, first and foremost, it is the, the, the bottom of the pyramid, the informal sector, which is involved in door-to-door -door collection or collection from the secondary bins of the waste. I'm talking about municipal solid waste here. And they are also actually involved in the other ways also. Uh, collection in, um, you know, for, let's say, e-waste. Um, and also uh, biomedical waste, there's a separate system. So, uh, you know, but still, we will see some uh, informal sector uh, participation there also. So we are also in panel with, uh, uh, as I mentioned, with number of agencies, government, we are also part of the South Bharat mission. Uh, and we have a wide range of uh, national and international clients. So we work with, uh, like for World Bank, we work in Shillong, you know, the, the, uh, this was way back, you know, when these rules had just come into place uh, and we are working on the 
the technical and the financial aspects of waste management. Um, then uh, we worked in several others. Recently, we are working on a project on marine plastics. That is a very new area. This is a German project and uh, basically supported by government of Germany through GIZ in India. I'm the deputy team leader for that project uh, in India uh, as a part of the consortium of consultants who are working. It's a two and a half, three years. So I'll be just, you know, based on my experience, I would just like to point out and then I'll keep it open. You can ask me any questions, whatever little I know, I'll try to answer these questions based on my, you know, experience. Uh, next one, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, so we worked in different sectors, but as I said, waste management is the core one, but we do have a good presence in responsible tourism certification, which is a very unique activity we do. We, uh, we our, uh, in fact, Kaziranga is among the major areas where we have certified wildlife lodges uh, based on, you know, uh, I'm just mentioning this again because keeping the geographical thing in mind. So um, uh, this is basically uh, international certification for responsible tourism, which is recognized by Global Sustainable Tourism Council. And we've been doing this for 10 years. It's a very niche area, very different kind of, you know, than normally different kind of activity than doing normal reports, etc. evaluations. So um, this is something very unique. And it is being now re recognized by the ecotourism you know, board and, you know, other, even the state level uh, in uh, Chhattisgarh, in Madhya Pradesh and many other states, Karnataka, for example. Renewable energy also, we've done a lot of work. Sustainable urban development, obviously, because since we work in the municipal solid waste management, uh, this is also one of the areas where we do, we've done a lot of work. Uh, water and wastewater management. Here we work, in fact, uh, there was a World Bank project where we did, I, as an individual, as a Environmental safeguard specialist provided the support to the bank. Uh, in this was the, uh, this was a drinking water rural drinking water supply project in four states, including Assam. <clears throat> Social sector CSR projects we have done skill development training, um, financial uh, entrepreneurship. So what I personally feel is that the typical conventional jobs, you know, in the office or or let's say you know, or, or, or working in the, of course, agriculture still remains a major thing, but people are moving from there. A lot of, you know, farmers, they're, they're, I mean, their sons and daughters, you know, they're moving to new areas. IT is another sector, but a lot of this is changing now. So in the coming years, emphasis would be on entrepreneurship, you know, identifying new areas where your skills, your knowledge, and also, you know, the ability to grab an emerging opportunity. I think that's very important for, especially for the youngsters. And we've done our bit, whatever little, you know, I mean, we've been there some, maybe we'll be retiring in a few years, but for younger people, it's a, you know, it's an opportunity to recognize. So this is, because I have worked in this sector, I can guide you uh, through this, you know, on this, on this aspect. There are similarly opportunities would exist on so many other areas also. So, but I will be focusing on waste management. Next one, please. So we we had, you know, as I mentioned, we do a lot of, uh, you know, the basic, um, you know, reports and things like that. But also we do some high tech things like, you know, uh, project evaluation and monitoring, risk assessment studies. We even done transaction advisory on waste management. A lot of international market studies. Uh, impact assessment studies, social economic surveys, techno economic feasibility reports. We got industries and the companies who want to get into waste management term loans from the financial institutions. You know, these are the bigger projects. So, because we are also, we were uh, right from 90s, we were in panel with IDBI, IFC, and ICSCI. They were the uh, development institutions. Of course, now they're all converted into banks, but uh, we still have that, you know, impanelment. So uh, the three major developmental financial institutions in India, we have been impaneled with them. So the report prepared by us was recognized and it was, you know, for during the present time, they look into this very closely. Anyway, I'm just mentioning this to give you an idea that we have 
an understanding of not only the opportunities but how to get finance how to help with the technology the resource mapping or you know the maybe project implementation also the monitoring the linkages linkages are very important now we work in so many municipalities so you know they sometimes they are not able to avail of the government support and subsidies and the funding you know which is available because they are not aware of it or they they you know because these are new schemes which are coming up all the time um, so i'll i just mention this because same thing applies to the to the at the private sector also you know the uh, the support which they can get from the government through the window of opportunities or also sometimes the multilateral and bilateral developmental agencies they have lines of credit or support for these kind of you know innovative projects uh, next one please so these are some of our client you know clients uh, as i mentioned earlier i think the world bank adb zika american india foundation defeat net fees doesn't figure here but they we work for them also there are just some very few european commission deloitte giz uh, up uh, state industrial development corporation huda then we work for many of these uh, you know renewable uh, the the, uh, the renewable uh, ministry of new and renewable energy mnre moefcc many ministries ministry of housing and urban affairs mohu as, as we call it so we've been working with the central ministries many uh, urban local bodies uh, many state level institutions and also multilateral and bilateral agencies next one so it's very important to understand that okay when we talk about the enterprise which is there in possibly there in the waste management sector so how this is you know how the regulatory framework is supporting it you know unless you have regulations unless you have laws let's say for uh, segregating of waste or for transportation of waste or for processing of waste or sanitary landfilling i'm just giving these examples unless there is a regulations nobody is going to do it and if there are regulations then it means these are the new areas which could support an enterprise or you know uh, areas which could generate employment or enterprise both uh, which for the you know especially for the youngsters so we have this companies act of 1956 okay these are the old you know the basic one for the company formation and then the article 51g of the constitution constitution which lays down that the duty it's the duty of every citizen to protect and improve uh, natural environment including forest lake river wildlife and for the living uh, creatures main uh, game changer was the environmental product environment production act of 1986 and then we had from from 1998 actually uh, it's not mentioned here a lot of uh, because i thought it will just be at one slide so uh, it started with uh, biomedical waste management rules which came up first actually in this in 1998 the msw rules actually came the first version came in 2000 then the batteries management rules and these have been amended so these are the i'm just giving a historical perspective here hazardous waste management rules in 2016 was a landmark year when six new or amended rules you know were were, uh, uh, were announced by the government of india so we had hazardous waste rules management uh, rules of 2016 EVS rules overruling the earlier rules of 2011 12 by this 2016 rules plastic waste management rules 2016 the swm rules 2016 the earlier version was of the year 2000, 2000 the cnd construction and demolition waste management rules this was a only new rule all other five rules uh, were actually the amended versions of the earlier rules which were in existence the biomedical waste management rules and the now we have the plastic waste management amend, amendment rules which has come up recently it would be implemented from next year so it is a changing scenario it opens up lot of you know uh, things for uh, anyone who wants to get into this so we have been nurturing you know 